It's a moment that's impossible to imagine unless you or a loved one have experienced it, a diagnosis of cancer. In Daniel Bilinovsky's case, an aggressive brain cancer, untreatable at most hospitals, the prognosis is dreary, perhaps a year to live. But for Daniel and his family, especially devastating. He was just 12 years old. From his very first day at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Nightline was there to witness a rigorous, groundbreaking treatment in one very courageous young man. When Daniel and his mother Lisa arrive at St. Jude, Safety, please come to the TTU building. It is an act of both hope and desperation. I'm sure he's exhausted. I think his head hit the pillow at 4.39 a.m. Oh, okay. Doctors at home in upstate New York had told his parents they think he has less than a year to live. Tell me about that moment when they look at you and say, your baby has got to it was terrible. It was horrible. Okay, let me put this on your arm. Down. One set of worries is quickly removed. You know, everything here is paid for through St. Jude. You'll never get a bill from St. Jude for anything. No. And for Daniel, it may also be a last hope. We're going to go get some vital signs. That's assessment and triage. The type of brain cancer he has, ATRT, is untreatable at most hospitals. But for more than a decade, Dr. Amar Gajar, here at St. Jude, has been pioneering a new treatment, which he believes may save Daniel's life. Is the tumor he has amongst the worst you've seen in children? It is an aggressive tumor in children, there's no question about it. The treatment will be grueling. You want to be careful about any loud noise exposure. Daniel may well lose some of his hearing and some of his strength. His ability to learn may also be affected. I can feel pretty strong on both sides. I feel awesome. The question is, how much? So before Daniel begins treatment, everything is measured. There's a chance that this will make you sick at your stomach, the radiation. Attacking the cancer with a treatment so aggressive that children under three cannot survive it without okay. suffering significant brain damage. That's the brain tumor? That's it. <gasps> Dr. Thomas Merchant is also part of the team. All of this is the tumor? Right. This little boy had a tumor that consumed almost a quarter of his brain. It's very extensive. I'll be here for quite some time, but just knowing the doctors and everyone are so nice, you know that you're in great care. But for all the support and kindness, this is still a hospital. Remember what you said in Syracuse, buddy? If you could have brain surgery, you could get a needle put in, right? And these are still children, children with cancer, who must endure poking and prodding and needles. All right, that's it. You, you, you know what the tour chest is? You get, get some out of the tour chest because you were stuck. Bravery is rewarded here. I might choose this guy. <laughs> and Daniel is going to need all his courage. The survival rates from this kind of cancer have been... They're very low. How low for someone his age? 12 years old. Very low. I, I just can't even bring myself to say. How low? Survival is not very common. But the doctors here have a way of beating the odds. There is no time to waste. How do you feel? Good. Doctors need to know immediately if the surgeons in upstate New York were able to remove the entire tumor in Daniel's brain, or whether cancer cells are still spreading. How tall are you? Almost my height. Dr. Bakazi will supervise a series of MRIs to find out. We are monitoring his blood pressure, his heart rate, his oxygen, his breathing closely from the control room while he's having a scan. At the same time, he's listening to the Shrek music, he's relaxed, he's comfy. Okay, you take care. The next day, Daniel and Lisa meet radiation oncologist Dr. Larry Kuhn. Daniel is nervous, worried about the test results. Oh, uh, yeah, actually, today's scan is good. <gasps> really? But Dr. Kun is unaware that he and his mother have not yet been told the results of the MRI. The spinal looks okay. Okay, meaning there's nothing in there. Oh, I'm 
so excited. That's awesome. I guess that I really should have done that. Yep, looks good. I actually stayed up late at night, actually researching everything they say. One of the spines, once it gets to the spine, you gotta take action immediately. Because it's a spine, every, every, the spine just connects to all the organs and everything. That's true. Your spine looks perfectly good. Get your butt over here. Oh, Donnie will not just receive treatment at St. Jude. That's all somewhat preliminary. He's part of a research protocol, as are all the children admitted to the hospital. The mm -hmm. He's on a protocol, probably the most intense in the nation, for this type of tumor. But as rigorous as the treatment is, the staff at St. Jude's does its best to let the sick kids here still be kids. And they've arranged a treat, especially for Daniel. Oh my gosh. The Grizzlies. Whoa, one. Oh my gosh. And Prince, the acrobatic finish on the other end. Even the tough guys on the Memphis Grizzlies respond to Daniel's courage. All right, you take care of yourself, all right? You can keep that ball. Thank you. Mom, I can keep the ball. It was awesome. Words can't explain how happy and grateful I am. An experience that will help carry him through the grueling months to come. It's January 2008. Welcome to Hogwarts. Harry Potter fills the room. Daniel's chosen a tape of the young wizard to help him through his radiation therapy. This is his 19th treatment. Daniel, we're going to take a couple of films today. The dose must be big enough to stop the cancer from returning while doing as little damage as possible to Daniel's brain. Everything's pushing really hard and they have to line up all of the lasers. You're not just putting on an act for us. You feel strong? Mm-hmm. I do. You feel strong with, like, mentally and physically. By the end of January, Daniel has received 31 radiation treatments. And finally, he is allowed to go home to Auburn, New York for the month of February. Everyone sewed a little patch for who was praying for me, and I just love it. And best of all, Daniel has some old-fashioned fun. Oh, I love the snow. I just didn't want to hit my incision. Mom made me wear a helmet. Of course, his friends are elated to have him home. Now that he's back, I'm really happy. We've been thinking about him a lot. He's, he's always, you know, in our hearts, we're always thinking about him. When we get home, we are playing the Wii. <laughs> I want all of it I can get. The month at home is delicious for Daniel and painful, a reminder of all he is missing. In March, it's time for him to return to St. Jude for chemotherapy. Daniel's anxious. Uh, the chemotherapy has been described to him as poisons that are going to be put into his body and they will kill the good cells as well as the bad cells. The chemotherapy will turn out to be even worse than they fear. I was horrified. I wasn't strong. I was in complete disbelief of how sick the kids actually become. Daniel Vilyanovsky, 27163. Push slowly. Push slowly. Many days, Daniel is violently ill. During the course of his chemo, he's also being given his own stem cells to help him tolerate the massive doses in a relatively short period of time. Finally, after three months of chemotherapy, by June, it has come to an end. I did it! <laughs> I feel so lightheaded that I might even trip over my legs. It has been seven months since his cancer was diagnosed. And you will be saying goodbye to Memphis. But you're going to miss us. Finally, a month later in July, after regaining some of his strength, Daniel is headed home.